Welcome to Bible Baptist Church. If you're able, let's stand and take your hymnal, hymn number 531. 531, all hail the power of Jesus' name. 531. All hail the power. Turn over to 508, Blessed Redeemer, 508. Hey. Up Cabri's mountain, one dreadful born, or Christ my Savior. Let's remain standing, and we're going to look to the Lord in prayer here in just a moment. Brother Owens, would you come up to chat? Owens, would you come get you to pray for us this morning? I ask you to pray for uh, Miss Gail Smith. This is um, 
Tanya Ball's cousin, and with health issues, also Brother Rochester had the knee replacement surgery, and he's supposed to get to go home today, amen, and the surgery went well, and we thank the Lord for that. Continue to pray for Rob Kirsch, and he's home also, and uh, recovering, doing the rehab and all of that, and uh, just had several strokes, and so I know Brother Billy, Miss Colette, uh, really appreciate all the prayers on behalf of Rob. And then pray for the Clifton Barker, Brother Rick, Miss Candy Cochran, Brother Rick with his breathing and all that, and they're in the process of moving to Missouri. Pray for Susie Pitts, her knee replacement uh, on the 10th, that'll be this week. And um, ask you to pray for the Smith family and uh, uh, Billy Joe Smith and, and uh, his family and the loss of his wife, Benita, and other families who've lost loved ones recently. Uh, Johnny uh, Krausen's preacher friend of mine, went home to be with the Lord. Uh, Eddie Webb had five, bypass, uh, five bypasses done, so pray for him. Uh, Levi Howard, has his little boy, has a tumor and needs our prayers. Pauline Cowan uh, had surgery on her neck and may have had a heart attack. And then also uh, Phyllis Rape has been in ICU, okay? Miss Lisa Owens uh, was here Wednesday night, her mamma, she's been having treatments and all of that. And then Ronnie Hale has COVID, ask you to pray for him. And also for um, Samantha. She'll be having spine surgery, and that's Miss Cindy's daughter-in-law. So I want to pray for all these different ones. And then um, my youngest son, Jake, heading to uh, um, Lafayette, Louisiana, to plant the church there. They'll be heading back down this week and doing more work on the house. There's a house right next door to the church, and they're working on the house and trying to get it where they can move in. But they're planning to start the first week in August, so you pray for them. They've got new carpet, and it's going to be very nice, and we're real proud of him. And, and uh, But also the... Um, uh, chairs are on their way in at the end of June and all that so it's a lot of pieces to the puzzle still got to come together but once you start there's no turning back amen so we're excited and proud of him and looking forward to that and then uh, our, my youngest uh, or my I say my youngest my grandson my oldest grandson uh, who's getting married uh, in August uh, was uh, had the shower yesterday for Dylan and Isabel and uh, Dylan taught Sunday school this morning preached Sunday school this morning did a great job and uh, so anyway we enjoyed that so Anyway, I'm glad all of you are here. Miss Jane Pearson's here today. Wave at Miss Jane. Miss Jane was here the very first Sunday. Wave at it again. There she is. Yeah. All right. She, um, uh, her and her husband, family were here the very first Sunday that we had church in the old. Well, it really they met with us in our home at 815 Virginia Street, and then also when we started the church, they were here to help us knock doors and and pass out tracts and, and try to get people, get a base of people to come, amen, and that was almost 30 years ago, so we thank the Lord for that, but anyway, she's in town, came in for the shower to surprise, and she did surprise, amen, so that was a blessing. All right, Brother Chad, you come and pray for us this morning, and I'm glad you're here in the house of God, amen, what a blessing. Amen, let's pray. Father, we come humbly, so humbly today. We just thank you for the day and thank you for this time we have to come together. Now, Father, we love you. We love you with all of our heart. We pray that, we, that you'll meet with us this morning. Father, if there was ever a time in America that we needed your help, it's now. We need your wisdom. We need your power. Pray for Brother Weedo as he preaches this morning, Lord. Just put your hands on him and, and just let every word be from heaven, Lord, and just let it feed our souls. And Father, you heard all the prayer requests. So many people hurting, so many people sick. I pray for them this morning, Lord, that you just touch them and, and be with them. And, and the young, his son, starting the church, Lord. So many young preachers that uh, they quit before they ever get started. I, I, I'm proud of him, and I pray, dear God, that you just bless him. Give him your help. Give him your power. Just be with services now, Lord. We love you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you. You may be seated, and we're going to listen to our choir uh, sing at this time.
want to stay in hymn number 516? 516? We're marching to Zion. 516. Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And thus surround the throne and thus surround the throne. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Let's take this time to shake your neighbor's hand. Make way back to your seat, hymn 516. Let's sing that second verse of 516. Let those to sing who never knew our God, but children of the heavenly King, but children of the heavenly King may speak their joys abroad, may speak their joys abroad. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. Marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. On that last, then let our songs abound and every tear be dry. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground to fair her worlds on high, to fair her worlds on high. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. Marching up to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Let's sing 520. 520. As I just keep trusting my Lord. Hymn number 520. I just keep trusting my Lord as I walk along. Storm clouds dark in the sky, or the heavens. 
heavenly trail. I just keep trusting my Lord. He will never fail. All right, thank you. you may be seated, and we'll have the ushers come forward at this time. And... Um, I'm going to put our nomination sheet out for our trustees, and we've got to have some more trustees. We've got to upgrade a little bit. Some of our trustees have, have moved away and all of that, so we'll put that sign-up sheet on the back. We'll be having a business meeting on the 16th, Wednesday night, the 16th, and, and uh, kind of have a collection of officers with that and, and take on some more missionaries. Amen. That a blessing. And going to be taking on, Lord willing, this year's conference missionaries and so forth, so that will be a blessing. If you need an offering, you slip your hand up. These fellows will get one to you. And... Um, I'm going to wait just a little bit, but i got a list of things that we're going to be trying to get some people involved in and, and uh, greeters. We're going to, you know, get some people help us in different areas, uh, lawn and grounds to help Brother Billy and Brother Michael out a little bit, nursery workers, our nursing home ministry. Um, anyway, junior church helpers, uh, ushers. We're going to try to get a little more organized, get more people involved, amen, and youth ministry helpers. And, of course, we always need bus workers. and and all of that and, and we're going to get us a security team amen so if somebody comes in and starts shooting we'll have a plan for them amen and uh so that's a good idea amen and uh so anyway our vbs workers and and uh, we got that sign up sheet in the back right now and also uh be sure and, and sign up there to get a, a vbs uh t-shirt all of our workers wear t-shirts and if you could come and stir some Kool-Aid or, or, I mean, pass out snacks or get all the snacks ready our, because of our bus ministry our VBS gets pretty big, and, uh, you know, we'll have a hundred and some odd children that usually come, and we haven't had one since COVID. We didn't have one last year, but before COVID, we would get up a hundred and, what, Brother Lee, it'd go up into hundreds, wouldn't it? And, and we give away a bicycle for the boys, bicycle for girls, and our emphasis has been on scripture memory, and we, we reward boys and girls for memorizing God's word, amen, bringing their Bible, bringing visitors, and so forth, and, uh, and faithfulness in coming, and so... Anyway, Brother Freddie and Miss Janie Reed are going to be uh, doing our ba vacation Bible school this year. They're one of our own, and so we're real excited about that. So that'll be a blessing. But, uh, again, uh, don't just put somebody down on the nomination on trustees. Just pray about it, and if God puts somebody on your heart, then kind of do it that way. Amen. But uh, that'll be a blessing to be able to do that and, and be a help to the, uh, to the church. And we'll talk to those that are nominated and kind of tell them what's expected of them and so forth. Okay? Again, on behalf of Dylan and, and Isabel, Dylan, Dylan and Isabel, would you all stand back there? That's my oldest grandson, Dylan, and he met Isabel at Bible College, and Isabel's from Washington, the state of Washington. They're going to get married August the 7th, and they came in for the wedding shower. Amen. That a blessing, and we're proud of Dylan, and uh, he preached this morning in Sunday school. Thank you all. You can be seated, and thank everybody who had a part in the shower to help all that be a great success and blessing, and we just appreciate you so much for that. All right, here we've got men's skeet shoot this coming Saturday, and uh, it got sign-up sheet in the back. And uh, it's going to be interesting, amen. It's going to be a lot of fun. And bring 25 to 50 shells and burgers and hot dogs. We're going to have that. So uh, anyway, uh, that'll be a blessing. And, and Brother Dalton will let you know on the location by Wednesday night. So that'll be good. And Brother Dalton's actually in Oklahoma today. And pray for him. Uh, he's there with Brother, um, oh, Brother, what's his name? I'd never forget him. Uh, Brother Domley. Yeah, Brother Alan Domley. He's there with Brother Alan Domley. And Brother Domley's. Uh, talking to, uh, to to Dalton a little bit, and and, and uh, so you pray pray for Dalton. God's will be done, and all of that. Okay, it's certainly in the talking stages, and and uh, we love Brother Dalton, though he's one of the young preachers in our church, and we're proud of him and a good leader and all of that. But uh, anyway, you pray for him for God's will on that. Let me read a, a prayer letter here. This comes from Missionary Jeff and Carla Bassett, and reaching West Africa through the Ivory Coast and East Africa through Uganda, planting churches in the Northeast Corridor. Uh, in the United States, and I love Brother Bassett. He's one of my dear friends, and if I get up that way, uh, I hook up with him, and he'll come and hear me preach, and, and he, you know, he's a great man of God, great missionary. It says, Dear friends and prayer partners in Christ, thank you for your prayers. Carla and I just finished a 10-day quarantine. Our daughter Joy, Joy was sick and tested positive for COVID-19. Joy is getting better. Carla and I had no symptoms. Pray for Carla's parents as they are selling their home and moving to New York State from Indiana. We will help them and we'll be moving into the same house with them to help them when we are not in Africa. Things in the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo are pretty crazy. Less than three months ago, the Italian ambassador to DRC, uh, the, uh, I guess that's the Dem Democratic Republic of Congo, was killed in a kidnapping attempt just outside of Goma. It is in Goma, a city of around two million inhabitants, where we are trying to plant another church. Pastor Dunn, uh, Junk, Junk, Juna, 
D-J-U-N-A, however you want to say that. We was lo uh, relocated with his family and other people from Congo a few uh, years ago by the UN from the refugee camp in Uganda and uh, to Kentucky. I trained him in our Bible Institute there at the camp. I had started four churches there in Dunna, or how do you say it? W he was my right-hand uh, right man. He is from Goma originally and helps me in the Congo. In 2002, Mount Narangongo, somebody say amen right there, uh, erupted and destroyed much of Goma. Over 250 died and 120,000 people lost their homes. The day before yesterday, the volcano erupted again. I don't have any problems, amen. Amen. It happened just after I finished my hour and a half Bible study with some believers in Goma and Dunga uh, was listening in on WhatsApp. Just three hours after we closed in prayer, I received a text. Everyone was panicking. The sky was all lit up with the spewing lava, the mountain of 11,385 feet high and nine miles uh, from Goma. The authorities gave them no warning, though they have scientists constantly monitoring the volcano. The wall of lava, a half a mile wide, <coughs> the flow wrecked 17 villages as it descended toward the city. The people had no idea which way to turn or whether to flee or not. Tens of thousands grabbed their mattresses and what they could carry. Some 8,000 have crossed over the border into Rwanda. Another 25,000 fled north of the city. The lava reached the airport but did not enter it. It stopped a few uh, hundred meters from the city. There are 32 dead, 170 children are missing with 5,000 houses destroyed. A string of earthquakes struck every 30 minutes causing more destruction. They fear quakes uh, may cause another eruption. Damage has also occurred across the border in Rwanda. Many have lost valuables, diplomas, visas, important documents and papers. If they had known, they could have been prepared. They had no time. Last week, I asked Dunya what, was, uh, what he wanted me to teach the people that day. He said, teach them how to give the gospel. I hope the teaching by asking them, I opened the teaching by asking them, what would you tell someone who was dying in an accident if they asked how could they be sure they would go to heaven at death? I, I went step by step using scriptures and explanations for over an hour and a half. They clearly grasp how to witness to a lost person. They now have countless opportunities to witness. God is always on time. Your prayers enabled us to know uh, what was most needed. Please pray for the people of Goma for their safety, peace of mind, rebuilding their homes, sufficient food, medical care, and for many to trust Christ. Also praying that the missing children will be safe and quickly found. It truly amazes me how that God guides me and uses me in his work. These tragedies are very real to me and tough, uh, touch me deeply. The, uh, the care of all the churches is a huge burden and a blessing. Your servant in Christ. The Bassets, and we appreciate Jeff and Carla Bassett and what they do uh, in helping churches in Africa and so forth. And um, I uh, was on a missions trip years ago in the Philippines, and and uh, they showed me where Mount Pinatubo erupted as a volcano, and, and the lava ran down into the city that I was at there, uh, Angeles City, and and uh, it was five feet deep. I mean, it was just like liquid molten lava. And they showed me all the schools and everything it destroyed. And it's unbelievable. And again, I don't have any problems. Amen. Uh, compared to people like that who, who you know, really, really, have, they need the Lord, amen, and they need our prayers. So anyway, thank you for praying for our missionaries, and what a blessing, okay? All right, well, let's bow our heads. Brother Richard, would you step up here and ask the Lord to bless the offering, please? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for today, and I thank you for this opportunity to uh, be here and to worship you in the house of the Lord. And I uh, pray, Lord, that you just be with uh, all those that are going through trials and troubles, especially those uh, affected by a volcano and, uh, and just for everybody else that are going through uh, trials and troubles here. And I ask, Lord, that you uh, just be with the message and be with, the, uh, uh, be with us as we receive the message. And I ask, Lord, that you uh, bless the uh, gifts and the giver. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now the shirt sign-up sheet is for Vacation Bible School, but it's also a church shirt. So if you want it, just sign up and then uh, we'll work out the details later. Uh, make sure you put your name and the size of shirt you want. I can't guess. Y'all don't want me to guess, okay? <laughs> said alone beside the highway begging his eyes were blind the light he could not see he clutched his rags and shivered in the shadows then Jesus came and bade his darkness flee when Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken. When Jesus comes, the tears are wiped away. He takes the gloom and fills the life with glory. For all is changed when Jesus comes to stay. From home and friends, the evil spirits drove him. Among the tombs, he dwelt in misery. He cut himself as demons' powers possessed him. Then Jesus came and set the captive free. When Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken. When Jesus comes, the tears are wiped away. He takes the gloom and fills the life with glory. For all is changed when Jesus comes to stay. So men today have found the Savior able. They could not conquer passion, lust, and sin. Their broken hearts had left them sad and lonely. Then Jesus came and dwelt himself within. When Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken. When Jesus comes, the tears are wiped away. He takes the gloom and fills the life with glory. For all is changed when Jesus comes to stay. He takes the gloom fills a life with glory for all is changed when Jesus comes to stay amen all right brother Lee thank you and the Lord makes a difference doesn't he he sure does pray for brother Lee's batching while Miss uh, Crystal is out of town and uh so you pray they'll be coming back in soon. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn to Acts chapter number 12. Acts chapter number 12. And uh, we start our Character First program this week. And uh, we have that over at the uh, James Johnson Gymnasium at Maddox Park. And this will be our 20th year to have Character First. Of course, we didn't get to have it last year, but we've had it for many years now. And uh, we touch a lot of boys and girls' lives. Uh, we have breakfast and lunch for the children. And... Um, we have snacks and crafts and activities, but we have a time of character building. Amen. My dad used to say, you'll either have character or you'll be a character. Somebody say amen right there. Amen. amen. Yeah, no, we want to build some character traits in these boys and girls, but we're, you know, we appreciate David Lee and those that work at the Boys and Girls Club of El Dorado, but we can tell them about Jesus, and we do tell them about Jesus. Amen. That a blessing. And so we want to see the boys and girls come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. We work together, really, with the Boys and Girls Club and, and uh, as far as that goes and the breakfast and all, all of that. So anyway, we get cranked up Monday morning. It's free, and it'll be Monday, uh, Monday through um, 
Monday through Friday and uh, goes through the months of June and July. We'll take off uh, the week of uh, the last week of July for youth camp. So it's about seven weeks and, and uh, uh, every, every morning we'll take a day or two off around the 4th of July. But anyway, it's a great time for the boys and girls. And last year that we had it, we didn't have it last year, but the year before we averaged like 50 something kids a day. Isn't that good? And a lot of our little bus kids come in and, and we're just able to mentor them and, and to be an example and, and all of that's a blessing, amen. And that's how you learn. And you learn by repetition and doing right, be around people that are good and godly. Those are good influences in the lives of our children. And so that's what we're trying to do, be a blessing to our community, help it to be a safer place to live. And uh, because that we're telling people about Jesus, amen. And when Jesus comes, amen, the tempter's power is broken. You don't have to grow up and be a drug dealer. You don't have to grow up and be a, you know, a drunk or something like that. No, you can be, you can be whatever you want to be. I heard a preacher say one time, you want to be a nurse, you find somebody that's a nurse, and you ask them how they got there. If you want to be a drunk, find a drunk. Ask him how he became a drunk. Go down the same road he went down, and you'll be a drunk. Well, I don't want you to be a drunk, amen? I want you to be a spirit-filled Christian. So find your spirit-filled Christian, amen, and ask them how they got to where they are. And go down the road they went down, and you can become a spirit-filled Christian, amen? And that's what the Bible teaches. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. So we want to produce spirit-filled Christians here at Bible Baptist Church. But I'm glad you're here this morning. And uh, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Now, in Acts chapter number 12 here this morning, let me just read this little thank you real quick before we get to the, uh, the main event here. Uh, we had the preacher, Brother Darren and Bethany Dusher. They came in from Parsons, Kansas the other day, and they were on their 32nd anniversary, and they just came passing through. We let them stay in our little prophet's chamber. So, said, Dear Brother Weed on Church family, thank you for letting us stay. Uh, and for the love offering, we gave him some uh, love offering to be a blessing to him. We wanted to let you know your ministry will be in our prayers, Darren and Bethany Dusher. And we appreciate the Dushers just stopping by, amen. And uh, what a blessing it was for us to be a blessing to them, amen. And that's what we're here for, to be a blessing and help to each other, okay. Acts chapter number 12, and, and just kind of remember back just a little bit, in Acts chapter number 11, um, there was a prediction, a, a prop, uh, you know, it was prophesied that there would be a great dearth, a great famine, a great you know, drought had, had just been given, and then a special offering was taken uh, by the Jerusalem church to help the victims that were going to be involved in that. And, and you know, Satan likes to attack, doesn't he, when we're down. I'm telling you, man, you get down, and that is when the devil is going to jump on you, amen, when we're struggling and, and when the, you know, the weight is heavy, the load's heavy. And uh, so in chapter number 12, the Bible gives us uh, some more experiences of the early church as it was growing and developing and folks were getting saved uh, all over the place. And, you know, governments sometimes are more of a hindrance than a help to the work of the gospel. That's sad, isn't it? But true. Uh, a, a lot of times uh, governments are more of a hindrance than a help. And I want you to look at Acts chapter 12, verse number 1. The Bible says, Now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. Let's pray. Father, we love you now. Bless this message to our hearts. And Lord, help us to listen. And Lord, I pray we get something from the Word of God this morning, from the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, Herod the king in our text here, uh, this was, he was a very wicked man. Uh, Brother Ricky Ball says the nut doesn't fall far from the tree, okay? And, and uh, this was uh, Herod Agrippa I, and he was the grandson of Herod the Great who killed all the little babies in Bethlehem trying to kill baby Jesus, okay? Y'all remember that story, okay? He was the brother of Herodias who, who got his uncle Herod Ant Antipas to behead John the Baptist. So it's just a bunch of bad, bad Herods, okay? And... Uh, uh, again, the Herod in our text is, is a wicked man, and he ruled over Judah from A.D. 37 to A.D. 44, and in a time uh, he ruled over all the territory his grandfather, uh, Herod the Great, had ruled. And at this time, other Herods had other parts of the, uh, uh, that they governed over other parts of Israel. And king, uh, the word king ascribed to him was this prestigious title that was given by Rome, uh, which was often gained by political manipulation. And uh, again, uh, Herod the king stretched his hand, uh, to, hands to vex certain in the church. Now the word vex here, it, it means to torment, to treat badly, to afflict, to hurt, to harm, uh, to oppress. And so the word vex just shows that, that Satan is very serious 
You know, when a church starts hitting on all cylinders and souls are being saved and, you know, I mean, things are popping, so to speak, and, and all of that, I mean, Satan is very serious about persecuting that church, attacking that church, and he attacks the leaders often. You know, he attacks the leaders in the church, okay? And, and look what happens next in verse number 2. The Bible says, And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Now, you know, uh, James is one of the apostles, and uh, there were 12 disciples. Jesus called to help him, Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, his brother, John, Philip, Thomas, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon, Judas, and Bartholomew. So there's 12 apostles there. James was the first martyr of the 12 apostles, the 12 disciples. His brother John was the last apostle to die. In between their deaths, uh, a, a lot of you know a lot of great Christians died during that time. Some of the finest saints of God who'd ever lived. And in his ecclesiastical history, uh, Eusebius, I think I don't know how to say his name, preserves a tradition which was first found in Clement of Alexandria. Listen to this now: that the officer who was attached to James and commissioned with guarding him was so impressed with the, the apostle's witness, with his testimony, that before James was martyred, this officer confessed Christ as his Savior and was beheaded with the apostle. Wow, the guard got saved by the grace of God because of the apostle's witness, and he got beheaded with the, the apostle when he got... Isn't that a blessing? Man, that's real deal Christianity right there, amen? And thank God for that, the testimony of James. Later, another James, the half-brother of Jesus would be in leadership in the church. And I'm glad God has more Jameses than Satan can kill. Isn't that a blessing? I see James Tucker back there. Wave at me, James. We've got another James. Any other Jameses here this morning? Amen. All right, we got a James back here that Satan hadn't got yet. Amen. That's a blessing. Killing James here shows that, again, the strategy of, of Herod was to go after the leaders of the church. Okay, now look at verse number 3. Just look at your Bible now. We're at Bible Baptist and we're preaching the Bible. We're not reviewing the Saturday Evening Post. We're not preaching Sports Illustrated this morning. We're preaching the Word of God. Amen. And because he saw it, please, the, the King of, uh, uh, Herod here, he saw that killing James with the sword, he saw it please the Jews. Sounds like a politician, doesn't he? He saw it please the Jews. He proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. So wow, Herod, Herod's murderous act of, of, of killing James with the sword, uh, it pleased sinners. These Jews uh, were not believers and they liked to see Christians suffer. And, and many folks today who are lost and without God and without hope, they like to see Christians suffer. They belittle Christians and make light of you know, uh, even our Christian heritage, you know. I've been to Philadelphia, and I've seen the Bible verses engraved on the walls and all that stuff. Our youth choir's been there. We've sang by the Liberty Bell. We love America, but it's just sad to see so many people throwing our Christian nation uh, under the bus uh, because of other ideologies, and, and, and they're not, they don't know Christ as their Savior. Wow. Wow. God's going to deal with those folks, by the way. He's going to deal, deal with those folks. Hold on to Acts here. Let me just give you a couple, couple references here. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter number 10. Let me read you a verse over here. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 31 of the Bible says, Hebrews 10, 31 says, It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. You know, a lot of people make light of God and they act like there is no God. And, 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 and you know, again, there is a God. And they're going to find out there is a God. And it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Take your Bible and turn to Jude. Very quickly to Jude. Right before the book of Revelation. Jude. There's only one chapter. So we just say turn to Jude. You find Revelation. Turn back in the first little book there. Right next to it. Look at Jude. Look at verse number 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. You and I, we've got to stand up for Jesus Christ. We've got to earnestly contend for the truth of God's word, okay? And I'm just telling you, we don't need less preaching. We don't need less Bible. We need more Bible. Amen. I need more Bible. I need, the Bible says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. I need my thinking. Amen. 
again. If I get away from God, my thinking gets wrong. Okay, I get stinking thinking, and now the abundance of the heart, the mouth thinketh, or mouth speaketh. So I don't want to get a bunch of junk in my heart and have a bunch of junk coming out of my mouth. Look at verse number four. For there are cre uh, crept, uh, there are crept, uh, there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Lasciviousness is living without self-restraint. It's like doing your own thing. If it feels good, do it. Man, I don't want to live that kind of life. They turn the grace of God and make it into something it's not intended to be. And denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? And, and we got to be careful about that, 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 those kind of people. Now look at verse number 14. It says, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among uh, them all of the, uh, 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 them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murderers, complainers, walking after their own lust, and their mouths speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. All this backstabbing and you, you know, scratch my back and I'll scratch your, you know, that goes on out in the world. God says, ah, uh -uh, no way. But beloved, look at this now, he's talking to us. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, they're living after the flesh, have not, having not the Spirit. Notice that's the capital S. So they don't even know the Lord. They don't have the Holy Spirit leading them and guiding them. Now look at verse number 20. Here's our instruction. But ye, but ye, beloved, don't live like they do, but ye, but ye beloved, uh, building up yourselves in your, in your most holy faith, Praying in the Holy Ghost. Hey, listen, you don't build yourself up. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You want to build yourself up in God, you got to keep reading your Bible. You want to build yourself up in God, you got to keep on praying. Amen? Just keep on praying until light breaks through. Just keep on praying. He'll answer you. God keeps His promise. His Word is true. Just keep on praying till light breaks through. Look at verse 21. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Well, wow, keep reading your Bible. Keep praying. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Listen, keep looking for the, the coming, the, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You keep watching. You keep living your life like Jesus is fixing to come back because one of these days he is going to come back. Man, I don't want to be living my life as a child of God in a sideshow and living a carnal Christian life when I could be walking in the Spirit. And if some have compassion, making a difference. Hey, we need to keep looking uh, and winning souls, people that are lost and without God. We need to keep on passing out gospel tracts and talking to people about Jesus, okay? And that's what we're supposed to be doing. And others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now, I love verse 24 and 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Can't keep myself from falling, but I'm glad I'm leaning, on, holding on to the one who can keep me from falling. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Well, wouldn't it be good to stand before God just faultless and your, your heart was clean and your hands were clean and you were right with Jesus and the trumpet sounded and man, we were caught up faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Miss Karen Best is back here and the grandkids uh, this morning and, and, and this morning I got a text from Brother Charles and he's up in Minnesota, uh, you know, doing, uh, escorting wide loads or driving wide loads or doing something. I don't know what he's doing, but anyway, he's in Minnesota, I think. And anyway, he, uh, he sent me a text this morning and it was a song and they were singing, all hail the power of Jesus name let angels prosper and I thought you know I ought to tell brother Lee we hadn't sang that song in a long time and I didn't tell brother Lee and brother Lee said turn to such and such page and it was all hail the power of Jesus name Amen. that's what we sang this morning I didn't even say anything to him I thought wow we need to sing that I just thought it in my mind and well I thought wow brother Lee's walking with the Lord I think this is good amen this is good when when you're not even saying anything and things are just happening I used to say how many things is that, that a coincidence I don't believe that's a coincidence I believe that's God I believe God does things like that amen 
And, and again, we ought to be giving the glory to God. The glory to God. Wow. Now, again, Revelation chapter 21. We're talking about what happens to that crowd that just tries to do what they want to do and kill, kill Christians, don't love the Lord. Revelation 21, 8, very strong verse in the Bible says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. This is the second death. Look back up there in Revelation chapter uh, 20. And verse number 11 says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, and small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were uh, judged, every man, every man according to, to their works. Look at verse 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Look at verse 15. Whosoever, that's anybody, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Man, I'm glad I'm not going to hell no more. If you're here this morning and you're lost, man, I'm telling you, you came to the right place. We don't want you to go to hell here. We love you at Bible Baptist Church. Yeah. Jesus loves you. God loved you. God so loved you that, that he gave his only begotten son to die for you. Take your Bible and turn back to John chapter number 20 real quick. John chapter number 20. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. John chapter number 20. John chapter number 20. John chapter 21. Oh, no wonder that doesn't look right. I'm in Luke. It may be John 20. Let me get over here and see what it looks like. Okay, I was right the first time. John chapter 20. Look at verse number 19. We've been talking about what happens to the, to the bad guys. Look what happens to us. John chapter 20, verse number 19. Then the same day of evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled together for fear of the Jews. Now I want you to notice this little statement right here. Came Jesus and stood in the midst. Amen. The disciples were fearful. Jesus had been crucified. And Jesus appears in his resurrected body to the disciples, and he's in the midst. What's, what's the midst mean? That means he's in the middle. He's in the middle. Came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace, be still. Yeah. Hey, listen. You know where, where I want Jesus? I want him to be in the midst of my heart. In the middle of my heart. You know where I want him to be? I want Jesus to be in the middle of my home. I want Jesus to be in the middle of my marriage. Yeah. I want Jesus to be in the middle of my children's lives. I want him to be in the midst. You know why? Because when he's in the midst, the storm can be raging. But hey, when he's in the midst of my storm, you know what he has the power and the authority to do to say, yeah. peace be still. Amen. There can be a great storm raging, but then there's a great calm. Why? Because Jesus is in the midst. This is not a good day to throw Jesus under the bus. This is not a good day to get away from Jesus. No, you want him in the midst. You want him in the midst of your finances. You want him in the midst of your health. You want him in the midst of everything that has anything to do with anything. You want Jesus in the midst. I'm glad this morning that he's in the midst. Wow. Agrippa's policy, Herod Agrippa I, his policy was to maintain a spirit of goodwill toward the Jews and with the Jews. And he got a little boost when he killed James. And so, looking back in Acts chapter number 12. Acts chapter number 12. And look at verse number 4. Very quickly here. Acts chapter 12, verse number 4. And when he had apprehended, talking about Peter, apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him. Man, he's treating him like he's some kind of vicious criminal here and uh, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people, okay? And the Easter here is not like our Easter. It was, it was one of their Passovers uh, that the Jewish uh, people observed. And, and again, uh, you know, wow, uh, 
Agrippa was going to take the life of Peter, okay? And so he puts him in prison the first day of this, this Passover festival of unleavened bread. And, and uh, he's incarcerated the whole time of the Passover, the, the, the festival, and uh, with the intent to bring him to public trial and, uh, and then to take his life. Now let me just say this to you, that the apprehension of Peter did not discourage the Jerusalem church. It set them to pray. Now look at verse number 5. And the Bible says in verse number 5, Peter therefore was kept in prison. Watch this now. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Remember that verse that said James, the effectual, James 5, 16, right along in there, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So the church, when Peter went to prison, James had been martyred with the sword, and then Peter's in prison now, and uh, great persecution and all that, but the church, not whining, not complaining, but the church prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Isn't that a blessing? Now listen, this is unbelievable. What happens one night... Preceding the day Herod Agrippa would have brought Peter forth for trial and execution, a very strange phenomenon took place in that prison. And I've been to several prisons and preached, and again, Peter, Peter was treated uh, like a vicious criminal. Look at verse number 6 at your Bible now. My eyes cleared here. It says, And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. Now picture this in your mind, okay? Peter is sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Wow. Verse number 7, And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, upon Peter, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side. He bopped Peter on the side. He kicked Peter. I don't know how he did, but he smote him on the side, what the Bible says, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. Now watch this. And his chains fell off from his hands. Wow, that's a miracle, isn't it? And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did, and he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. Now remember this rescue effort by the angel of God. Remember the church was praying without ceasing, okay? So I mean, it's, a kind of, it's all going together. The church is praying without ceasing, and then God's over here working on behalf of Peter. Y'all see the connection there? Okay, and, and prayer does, it changes things, and so it's all kind of going together right on time, in the nick of time, we might say, and God sometimes seems like waits till the last minute to bring our needed blessing, but it helps us to trust him more and not give up. Peter shackled there, he shackled. Mr. the end, if you can come to the piano, if you would please, and turn to page number 12. Peter's uh, escape looked impossible, it seemed impossible. Chained with one, but not, not, not with one chain, but with two chains. Shackled, we might say, to two soldiers, between two soldiers. There were guards at the door. But God delights to rescue when things look impossible. The light that appeared coming from heaven, coming from the angel, I don't know. Peter raised up quickly, probably unsure what was happening. Peter, get ready. Come on, we're going. Get dressed. Wow. It's all going down pretty fast for Peter. Look at verse number 9. And he went out. He got his garment on, got his sandals on. He's following this angel. And he went out and followed him and wist not. I mean, he didn't know. He wist not that it was true which was done by the angel. But thought he saw a vision. Man, he, he's kind of in a daze. This all went down so fast that he doesn't even know, man. Is this a vision? Is this really happening? And, and all of that, and he's get, being led out of the depths of the prison. Now, look at verse number 10. The Bible says, And when they were past the first and second ward, and they came unto the iron gate, watch this now, the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, watch this now, which opened, the iron gate opened, which opened to them of his own accord. Wow, we got, we got, we got chains falling off, we got iron gates opening of their own accord. 
say that that's a miracle. Yeah, it's a yeah, 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 yeah. Miracle, miracle, miracle. It's a blessing, isn't it? Wow. And they went on, went out and passed on through the one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. Look at verse number eleven. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety. I know for sure. I know for the truth. I know for a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So Peter realized that it was indeed a miracle of God affected by the prayers of righteous saints Amen. of God. Hey, don't ever underestimate the power of prayer. Yeah. Don't ever underestimate the power of prayer. When God puts somebody on your heart, please pray for them. Amen. Please pray for them. I'm telling you, God can do what you can't do and what I can't do. And he can go and get them and he can talk to their hearts. I'm glad this morning that he's in the midst. I'm glad this morning that he's in the midst. Man's not in control. God is in control. Hey, listen to me. God allowed James to be killed with a sword, but he allowed Peter to live. The Apostle Paul said, Trophimus, have I left at Miletum sick? In 2 Timothy 4.20. Some are delivered, some are not. God does things according to his will. I'm just glad this morning I'm glad this morning that he's in the midst if you have your song book I was going to sing this and, but I'm going to get you to help me I'm going to make you an honorary member of the choir today I want you to think about that day that he came by your way that Jesus came by your way and I want you to think about how you were shackled you were chained by sin, and I was chained by sin, shackled by a heavy burden, neath a load of guilt and shame. Then the hand of Jesus touched me, and now I am no longer the same. Why? He touched me. He touched me. Let's sing it together. Shackled by a heavy burden, I like it. If you're here this morning and you've never been saved by the grace of God, if you're not sure that if you died today that you'd go to heaven, if you've never received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, listen, today is the day of salvation. Oh, please don't harden your heart. Please don't put it off. Oh, King Agrippa, wicked king in the Bible said, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Almost. Don't count. No, oh, oh, Agrippa, he's in hell today wishing he would have all together received Jesus as his Savior. Please don't die and go to hell. The Bible says, he that believeth not is condemned already. If you don't do anything, you're going to die and go to hell. But I thank God for that day when he stopped by my way and he unshackled me. He unshackled me, amen. He unshackled me and he saved me. Why? Jesus reached down in love and mercy and he saved my soul so I wouldn't have to die and go to hell and pay for my own sins. Why? Because he already did that for me. Isn't that a blessing? Amen. If you're here this morning and you're lost, if you're here this morning and 
and maybe he hasn't been in the midst. Maybe you've been away from him. Listen, it'd be a good time to say, Lord, I'm sorry, you've kind of been further away from me than you should be. I want you to be in the midst of my marriage. I want you to be in the midst of my life. I want you to be in the midst of my home, in the midst of my children's lives, my grandchildren's lives. Whatever the need might be this morning, let's stand together and we'll sing that second verse. Brother Lee, come on, you can lead us in the second verse of He Touched Me. Since I met that blessed Savior, if you need to come to the altar, you step out and come right now. Would you come as we sing? time at this blessed Savior since he cleansed and made hey God loves you this morning he sure does he loves you he's a good God I will never cease to praise him I'll shout it while eternity hey I'm glad he touched me amen to touch you this morning. And he wants to be in the midst this morning. He wants to say peace be still in your life. My First verse again, see if you're praying. Shackled by a heavy burden, the load of guilt. I'm glad I'm not going to hell no more, amen. I'm glad I'm not going to hell no more. In the hand of Jesus. And it's because of me, all my righteousness is a filthy rag. It's because he touched me. Is this really real? Is it really real? Am I, am I having a vision? No, it's real, y'all. It's real. Yeah. We're going to heaven when we die. we got Jesus in our heart. Yeah. Amen. I'm telling you, he makes a difference. Yeah. Amen. I'm not talking about a bad case of sauerkraut and wieners or pepperoni pizza, eating too much pepperoni pizza. I'm talking about he touched me. Yeah. He touched me and made me whole. Amen. I'm not going to hell no more. Oh, yeah. It's a blessing, isn't it? Hope you'll come back tonight, and uh, we've got another good message tonight, and I've been preaching on patience, patience, and well, how many of y'all need that one right there on patience, yeah, amen, I know I do, man, I'm kind of like that lady, Lord teach me patience, and I mean right now, yeah, amen, <laughs> yeah, that's the way we are, isn't it, yeah. All righty. Well, pray for us. Uh, this week we'll be uh, getting our Character First program going. But Bob, come on up. Get our Character First program going, and um, and we'll be out fundraising for that. If any of you have any uh, body you know or whatever might like to have a part in helping some children's ministry this summer, we take a lot of kids to camp. We do our Vacation Bible School. We do our Character First program, and all of that costs money to do ministry. It does. And uh, the snacks and crafts and activities and youth camp, all that stuff costs money. So uh, we get out and meet the bushes and have a lot of support here in the community. Isn't that a blessing? A lot of people in the community, they see what we're doing and trying to help children. And they help us help the children. And that is a blessing. But somebody has to get out and do the legwork. So anyway, uh, Brother Larry and Brother Ricky and we got all kinds of people over the years who've helped me raise money in the community. Just with business friends and all of that. And, and uh uh, I was thinking, brother, brother Larry, uh, he, years ago we got uh, we put new air conditioners in the gymnasium over there, and uh, it was that year we needed like uh, forty-five thousand or something. It was a bunch of money anyway. 
uh, brother, I remember Charles Hayes that owned systems contract, and he, he sent a check in, and I did, I've i never met Charles Hayes, but Brother Larry knew him, and man, he just sent a check in, several thousand dollars. Isn't that blessings? It's not what you know, it's who you know sometimes, and, and uh, we just thank the Lord for everybody who's ever had a part in helping us minister to boys and girls, and every time uh, we got a check in the mail this week, and I'm just thinking about fundraising, got a check in the mail, and uh, from, 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 from somebody in Texas, amen, I thought, thank you, Lord, just give me confirmation. So I can get out there and get the legwork done. I'm seeing it's already on the way. Amen. And I'm praising the Lord. Amen. So anyway, you pray for us on that Tuesday morning. We are going to run over to Jacksonville, preach at the preacher's meeting over there. And uh, they're going to have a crawfish boil. I'm not going to just eat crawfish, though I am going to eat some crawfish. Somebody say amen right there. Amen. I do not suck their heads, but I do eat their tails. Amen. And uh, so anyway, how many of y'all eat suck their heads out and all that stuff? Okay. All right. God bless you. handful of y'all. Okay. We'll pray for y'all. Amen. All right. Um, but anyway, I'm going to take some of the young men in the church with me, some of the, some of the young guys, and we're going to go over there, and they're going to spend the day with the preacher, and we'll have a great time over there, okay? Amen. And that'll be a blessing. So if any of you men are off on Tuesday you want to go with us, we're going to just take a van load of boys and head that way, amen, about leave about 6.15 in the morning, amen? And that'll be a good time. And the Lord, Brother Danny Allen's going to preach, and Brother, um, uh, Brother Mike Stanley from up in Highland, Arkansas, Brother Danny Allen's in Greenbrier, Brother Sean Cuthbertson's in Pine Bluff, Brother Kevin Stivix is in... Uh, Beard in Arkansas, and then I'm in El Dorado. So there's going to be five preachers, so they'll just everybody just get a little piece of the pie from 9 to 12, and then we'll eat them crawfish like they're going out of style. Amen. So preachers need preaching too. Amen. amen. So anyway, that'll be a great time in the Lord. So if you have a free morning, you want to go over there with us, that'll be a blessing. We'll get back in in the afternoon after we eat, eat crawfish. Okay. All right. Hope to see you tonight at 6 o'clock. Goodbye. Remember, the sign up sheets are in the back for the skeet shoot next Saturday and also for the. Uh, Shirts for vacation Bible school, just for church. They're really, I like the design of them this year. Talk about going into all the world, preaching the gospel. And uh, remember the youth choir practice tonight at 5:15. Okay, let's bow our heads. Father, we love you this morning, Lord. And I thank you that you were here in the midst with us this morning, Lord. And we got all people, different people, Lord, going through all different trials. But as long as you're with us, Lord. As long as you're with us, Lord.